using quick transitions in Media Composer 7. All right, so I'm in here editing a little video and let's just play through this section right here. We put in our keyframes, that's pretty much it. So we'll make up a brand new one right now. Okay, so right there where you hear that silence in this audio track, which has already been edited in Pro Tools. While I was editing the audio, I knew that I would want to dip to black right there. So I've already made my edit here in Media Composer 7 and I already have a video on how to do that. I have my add edit button mapped to my B key. So real quick to make an edit, I'll just hit B. There's my edit that I can quickly adjust. I'll control Z to get back to where I was. And I'm going to hit the caps lock key so I can hear the audio while I scrub my timeline. Okay, so, so I'm saying that's pretty much it. So that sort of signals. Okay, that's going to be sort of an end to the action. So I want to put in a transition there. In this case, specifically a dip to black in order to sort of establish sort of new information coming along. And here in Avid Media Composer, you can use what's called the quick transitions. So again, I've already made my cut right there, centered on my cut, I'll hold down control. There we go, I'm right on my cut there. And right over here is our quick transitions button. So we could press that. You also have a button over here and you have one in your fast menu or in your hamburger, mm. which is, I watched hamburger. a tutorial on Media Composer a while ago and the guy giving the tutorial always called this fast menu the hamburger. So that's just kind of stuck with me and really helped me along in Evan Media Composer. So I always call this the hamburger menu. So you can click your hamburger and right there you also have a quick transitions button. However, an even easier way would be to map your quick transitions button right to your keyboard shortcut. And in Avid Media Composer, it's stupidly simple. So we'll open up our keyboard here in settings. Let's double click that. So you can see I already have my quick transitions mapped here to my slash key. But if you don't, you can simply come up here to tools, open up your command palette. Then you can just look through these and find what you want to add. So for us, we want quick transition. That would be here in effects. So here's quick transition. And to add a shortcut, quick key, simply just grab whatever you want and just drop it onto a key. So again, I've already have mine mapped, so I don't need to remap it, but I'll just grab this again and say, drop it onto, oh, I don't know. Let's drop it over here and there we go. So now I have a quick transition button way up on the, I think that's the tilde key or, and I also have the quick transitions here and I can always remove this if I want and say, no, I don't want that there since I have it here. Instead, I'd like the say title tool and I'll drag that on real easy, real quick to do. Okay. So we already have our quick transition mapped to our keyboard right there on this slash key right above the enter key. So I'll close these down, close that tool palette and right there's where I want my quick transition. So I'll just hit the quick transition key or you can press the button here. So I'll just hit the key. All right, so here's our quick transitions menu. First, I'm gonna change my target drive that needs to be on this drive for me. And more than likely when you first start this up, it's going to be on a duration of 30 frames. Let me go back to our quick transition here, but 30 frames is a bit quick for me. In this case, let me change this to 60, 60 frames. And we can use these buttons down here to where we want the transition to start. I want this right on the middle of my transition. So right on the cut, so I'll just press that button. So now we have 30 frames before the cut. We're gonna kind of start to fade. And then for 30 frames after the cut, it's going to be fading back up onto the screen. I want dip to black, so I'll choose dip to color. And that's pretty much it. Let me change this back to V. Now we can say add and render or just add. And for now I'll just add. Okay, and then we can see our transition right here. And you can actually adjust this further with these handles we have. So say it's fading too fast or too slow, you can adjust that right here by pulling these handles out. Of course that moves my midpoint. So if I play back now, so we'll make up a brand. See it's off. So I hit control Z and go back to my full 60 frame fade out and fade in and take a look at this. Put in our keyframes. That's pretty much it. So we'll make up a brand. So that's pretty good. The only problem is I want to dip completely to black. You see that even when we're right on the center, it's almost completely black, but it's not all the way. So I'll just come here to effects mode. You can see why on our foreground level is 51. This needs to be on 50. So I'll move this down to 50. There we go. Complete black now. So now let's take a look at this. 
and put in our keyframes. That's pretty much it. So we'll make up a brand new. So that's a perfect fade for me. So now you would go on and continue making your edits. And I actually have another edit here. This edit doesn't actually need, doesn't actually need a fade, but let's pretend that it does. So I'll come right to, right around the center. It doesn't, you don't have to be particular. And I'll hit my quick transition button. Okay, and now it comes up with duration of 60 frames. It's saying start 24 before the cut. I can say right in the middle, but of course I can't because the clip it would be fading from would be, you know, it's not long enough. So let me adjust this to 30 frames. Put it right in the middle, 15 frames and 15 frames. And let me make sure I change this to dip to color and hit add. And let's take a look at this one. Pick up a brand new one right now. So we'll go. All right, so again, we have the problem of it's not fading completely down. So I'll go to my effects mode and see we're on 52 there. So let me change this to 50 right there. Perfect. A new one right now. So we'll go. Beautiful. Now let's look at another way we could use quick transitions. In the previous examples, we used even numbers like 30 and 60, and then we would adjust the fade amount in effects mode down to 50. So we got the full complete to black fade. But there is another option, which I already alluded to with the text on the screen there. So let's look at using an odd number instead. So we'll just grab a random point here, right here, and we'll go ahead and make our edit. And now we'll hit the quick transitions button. So the duration is on 30 here. And of course, as we know, if we choose 30 and we add that, then we look at our fade. It doesn't go all the way down. So we simply come here and make sure we're in the middle and change this down to 50. So we get the full fade to complete black. So instead of going into effects mode to manipulate your fade that way, you could also, we'll come back in here to the this quick transition and instead of 30, let's now choose 31. Make sure we're right in the middle of our cut. We still have dip to color and now we'll add that. Okay, so now if we look on the screen, we're right in the middle of our cut and we are at complete black. So if I scroll through this, I'll just hit the caps lock key to turn off audio when I scrub. So see that goes to complete black. And if we check in effects mode, you'll see we're right on the center of the cut and we can see that automatically the level goes down to 50. So right in the center of the cut, we go 47, then it drops down to 50, then up to 53. So we'll check this real quick again here. So we'll just come up here, add an edit, hit our quick transitions. And now let's do something like 65, another odd number, make it sure it's right in the middle of our cut, dipped color, we'll add that. And right there, we are at complete black. We can confirm by going to effects mode, see that we're down on 50, awesome. So we'll do it one more time. Let's go up farther, add our edit, quick transition. This time we'll do say 43, right in the middle of our cut, add. You see what I did there? I didn't change this from dissolve. I need to change that to dip to color, hit add. All right, right in the middle. Complete black. Effects mode confirms that for us. And one more thing just real quick here. If you'd like to hold at complete black or whatever color you've chosen to dip to, and you would like to hold at that color for a while, instead of dipping straight to it and then dipping right out, you could of course insert a slug, say like a three second or five second, just complete black slug, like an image file in between your cuts and then fade down and then fade out of that. That's one way you could do that, but you could also do that in here in your effects editor using either the odd number or even numbered transition lengths. So let's look at that real quick. So here we are right in the middle of our fade. Okay, so we're complete black. I'm going to go ahead and add a keyframe there. I'll just say to all enabled groups, that keyframe's at 50. These first keyframes are at zero. These last ones are at 100. So let's say I want to have it be black for, instead of just that one sort of frame there, I want it to be black clear out to about here. So I'll go ahead and add a keyframe there. I'll just say to all enabled groups and we'll change this down to 50. Now we're gonna stay at 50 here. Then we're gonna start pulling out here. See that? Okay, that's cool. Of course we can render this, but I'll just close for now. And now let's take a look at this fade. Here we are right in the center of the cut. And then we're going out one, two, three, four frames. And there we go, We now we start to fade back out. So let's see how this looks now with that longer fade length. The end, simply choose my keyframe there. All right, you see that? See how it held for a few frames and then it popped right up. So that's probably not the exact way you would want your fade to go simply because we're going from you know, we're staying at 50 here. And then like, as soon as we get over here, we're already up into probably the sixties or seventies or so. So you would have to kind of adjust your keyframes a bit. You'd probably want to take your keyframes off of the exact center and kind of have these start maybe up here a bit more and then hold to 50 around here. So, and then you may want to adjust your keyframes further up here. So maybe you fade faster or slower on either end of your fade, just so it's not as jarring when we're holding at 50 and then we come right up. So that's just a couple more ways you could use the quick transitions 
either using even numbers or odd numbers. And then you can adjust things in your effects editor. And next we're going to look at how to save our fades that we created with the quick transitions by coming into the effects editor and saving those. And you can do that with either your even or odd number quick transitions. So let's say we absolutely love these two fades. So if we click this fade, you can see this is a 60 frame fade. And this one here is 30 frames. All right, so right now I have my 30 frame fade uh, dip to black selected. So I'll go into effects mode here. And one of the great things about Avid Media Composer is you really only have to do several things once and then you basically never have to do them again once you have things set up how you like. So this is my 30 frame fade. We have it set up right, levels right in the middle so I get complete black. If I wanted, for instance, I could change this to maybe I want it to dip to, uh, I don't know, pink. I could say OK, dip to pink and you can take a look at that. A brand new one right now. So we're gonna fuck. Of course, we don't like that. So we'll go back to our effects mode. We'll change this back to black. So now let's say we really love this effect, but every time we don't want to have to go through and hit our quick transition key and then adjust things a little bit. In Media Composer, you don't have to do that. So we have this 30 frame dip to black setup. Now I can save this effect. All I have to do is grab this effect right here. See, I grab it and let's drop it right in my bin. Boom, there we go. Now just click on it. I'm going to call this dip to black. 30 because it's 30 frames and we're good. Then we'll say I really love this 60 frame uh, dip to black that we have. So I'll just choose that I'm still in effects mode here. I'll just grab it, drop it right in my bin. Let me rename it here. Dip to black. I'll call it 60. And we're good. I'll close down the effects mode. So I'll just come up here. Let me turn off the caps lock so we're not hearing audio when I scrub. And let's just pretend that I need a fade. Oh, right here. So I'll add an edit. There's my edit. And then for this particular edit, let's say I really need a 30 frame fade. So instead of going to quick transition, I already have my perfect fade set up over here. So I'll just grab it, drop it right on the middle. And there we go. Need these two video layers. I'll just perfect. You can see it goes all the way down to black. Need these two video layers. I'll just wrap. So that's a quick and easy way to use quick transitions in Avid Media Composer, be sure to map that to your keyboard. And whenever you have your perfect fade set up, whether they're cross dissolves or you're dipping to color, whatever that happens to be, you can then save that effect in a bin. And whenever you need those fades, just open up that bin and pop them right on your edit points and you're good to go. You don't have to do things twice in Avid Media Composer. <laughs>